In this presentation, we will discuss financial accounting and accounting software such as QuickBooks. When we learn these two concepts, they're often learned in completely different areas. We often think of them as almost different types of animals, different types of things. One being the financial accounting, that dealing with debits and credits, creating the financial statements. The other being the accounting software, which we typically think of as inputting data into the accounting software. So we have the data entry, and then the software helps us to generate the financial statements. Of course, these two things are linked in many ways because the financial accounting software is creating or entering the transactions, creating the financial statements from them. Why is it then that when we learn financial accounting, we learn something that seems completely different than when we go into uh, accounting department possibly and work with financial software such as QuickBooks and how can we reconcile these two things so that we can understand both the theory and the application to better our practice. When we're learning financial accounting theory, we typically start with the accounting equation. We talk about debits and credits, and then we record those debits and credits, posting them to a general ledger, creating trial balance from it, and finally the financial statements from those. We think of everything in terms of the building blocks, the double entry accounting system, that being the accounting equation, or the format of debits and credits, those are what we use in order to build the financial statements. We do that by taking our transactions here and we post them to a general ledger such as the cash general ledger here and the accounts payable general ledger and then the general ledger is then used to generate the trial balance. So we create a trial balance like this. The trial balance is then used to create the financial statements. This is really basically the whole story of what's going on and we get to see the actual pieces that are being built up. The problem is that when we're learning this in financial accounting one, they probably often don't show the big picture like this. We're often working on one, you know, little piece at a time and don't really see how it fits in because we're doing it by paper and pencil. If we use something like Excel, much, much better to be able to get the big picture, uh, especially if we have pre-formatted worksheets. But in any case, we only see this this building block type of information to create the financial statements. The accounting software looks a lot different because, of course, it's designed to eliminate the building block. It's kind of like this is this building block is like the bricks, the debits and the credits. And then the accounting software is going to paint over the bricks in some way or put something over the bricks so you don't see the bricks. And that will make the accounting data input a little bit easier. But if you want to know what's going on, you have to be able to know what's happening underneath. So if you want to build a house, you're still going to need to know what's going on underneath. And that's usually when we need to set up the accounting system. We need to know what's going on. If we're just doing data input into software, then we may be able to get into quite a lot without knowing what the building blocks are. So if we're going from the financial statements in this format, learning financial accounting, going through school financial accounting, then to accounting software, it can be a shock because basically the software then is going to hide everything. It's not going to show us the building blocks as clearly. We'll do everything as being driven by forms. This is going to be the types of forms that we put in place. QuickBooks will then make the building blocks for us. If we're going the other way, if we're going from QuickBooks because we've done data input and we want to have a better idea of the building blocks because we know the forms, then the problem is that when we go to financial accounting and learn financial accounting, we start to see these building blocks that we're totally unfamiliar with, these debits and credits type things. And we're, we're basically having the mindset possibly at that point that, hey, I've, I've done accounting software for a long time, haven't really needed this information for what I have been doing, and this seems abstract to what I've been doing. But of course, the accounting software is using this, and the more we understand what it's doing, the better we'll be at being able to fix things, solve problems, set up the accounting system. And that's really where you want to be at. You want to be at the point where someone asks you a question, how can I figure this out or what happened to this piece? then you can go back in and do some digging and figure out what is going on. So that's going to be one of the major differences. If we're going from financial accounting to accounting software, we're used to using the uh, the transactions, debits, and credits. And when we go to the accounting software, we're not going to, they're going to try to hide the debits and credits a lot of times. They're going to lock one place from another place so that we have someone working on the vendor section doesn't work possibly on the customer section or the employee section, separation of duties, internal controls. And therefore, we can't see as much as we would see uh, if we were doing the full system in terms of debits and credits. If we're going from the full system or entering data into QuickBooks or some other accounting software, then going back to learning financial accounting, 
again, we, we now we're, we have the opposite problem, and we have the problem of us knowing the forms, but not really understanding the data input. So if we go into the accounting software, then of course, it will be driven by these forms. So we'll have these forms here that will drive the transaction and we'll enter like a bill, we'll enter a uh, pay bill, and those will then be used to enter the financial data. So that's that information will still be used to create the end result, the financial statements, which is the same end result we have when we enter data in this format. However, we won't see the building blocks as easily. We'll have to, we'll more easily be able to see it from more of an auditing standpoint, but from a reverse standpoint. We'll see the end result. Here's the checking account, and then go back to a report that's going to be somewhat like a trial balance or a general ledger. And then we could see the journal entries that were generated here to get to this data. So the only way to really understand this, to, to really reconcile these two, if we're a student, and we want to go in and we're thinking about going into practice, even if it's going to be, if it's an audit public accounting or if it's going to be in a, in a firm, you're going to be working with accounting department people and you need to know the software to do that. You got to know which reports you're going to get. The reports are going to be different. You're going to have to know, you know, how to, how to talk to people in the data input software, talk around things of not using debits and credits so much as plus and minus up and down. Uh, and how do you convert that? Because it's easier to talk in debits and credits once you know them. And people in the accounting department that work in a software are going to have to know more if you want to, you know, build the accounting system or work with the auditors. Then you got to know, then it's the more you know about the financial accounting, the more flexibility you have to do that. The best way to get these two together is basically to work a comprehensive problem where we do both side by side. So, in other words, a comprehensive problem where we run through the full accounting system and say, here's us entering a bill with the QuickBooks and seeing what happens to the financial statements. Here's us entering a bill with debits and credits, posting it to the general ledger, creating a trial balance from it, and making the financial statement. And then we'll get to see the full big picture step by step. And then we'll just keep moving forward. What happens when we pay a bill? Here's what we do in QuickBooks. Here's what we do in uh, financial accounting with a big picture view. Not just the journal entry, but journal entry, posting the journal entry to the GL, making the trial balance from it, taking a look at the financial statements after that point. And the same with the invoice, receive payments. If we go through this step by step and reconcile each time, reconciling our balance sheet and our profit and loss after each new transaction, which in software is driven by forms, which in financial accounting is driven by journal entries, then we'll get a really good idea. If you're in financial accounting, really good idea to do this because then you'll get an idea of the accounting software and you'll get an idea of the forms that drive the transaction which is something often missing when we eliminate the forms and just look at journal entries so we want to actually see okay what form is related to that journal entry if you compare the software a lot easier to do that that really helps with internal control type of understanding as well if you're using the software you always want to think about when i make the form what's the related journal entry that's happening because then you'll be able to visualize what's happening to the financial statements, the balance sheet and the income statement, without having to go back and forth and check which account went up and down. You'll be able to understand, okay, this happened here, and that's going to affect these places. Basically, at least two places are going to be affected with the, right, with the double entry accounting system. If you, if you basically go back and forth from here and learn the financial accounting, you'll always understand those two places, at, at least. <laughs> and then you can basically uh, know what's going on with all the transactions a little bit more easily and hopefully then get into the designing of the, the system oftentimes because that's really where uh, a lot more necessity is needed in terms of knowledge which is often a higher paid types of, of places and work with auditors to design the system or work with uh, the system or handle any problems that arise within it. We do have a course that does this. We have a discount below in the description. And we'll basically go through QuickBooks and we'll go through Excel in a step-by-step -step type of format, one by one, and see each transaction in each format. Now, Excel is going to be what I would compare to financial accounting. If you go to financial accounting and take financial accounting courses, you're going to be pro probably doing it with paper and pencil or, or in some type of database program. But what you should be doing it in is Excel because that will give you the best way, most transparent way to see the information. So really... Uh, if you don't know Excel, then uh, you, these are pre-formatted worksheets, and you should be able to, they, they're 
be easy to work with by being pre-formatted and you'll pick up some Excel skills. And if, you, if you're not working with Excel and you're learning financial accounting, start working with Excel to learn financial accounting. And then we've got the QuickBooks, which of course will do a comparison side by side. These same concepts will work with any type of accounting software for the most part. If you wanted to go in here and just take a look at the free courses, you, the free part of the course you can, which is basically a short course in and of itself. So you can go into the start the new company file, setting up that information. There's a substantial amount that will be for free. And then you can go through and see if you wanted to uh, continue on with it if it looks like something that would be interesting for you. So again, there's a coupon below, an affiliate type coupon uh, within the description.